Palo Alto voters will decide on Measure E. It would rezone 10 acres of Bixby Park to be used for the construction of a composting facility. Hi, I'm Peter Dreckmeyer, and I'm here to encourage you to vote yes on Measure E, the Palo Alto Green Energy and Compost Initiative. A little bit of background information. In 2007, when I was on the City Council, the issue of the Palo Alto dump closure came before the City Council. And some of us were very concerned because not only would we lose our recycling center, but we'd also lose our municipal composting facility, which we've had since 1978. And we were concerned that by uh, trucking that waste, yard waste, all the way down to Gilroy, that would have terrible uh, greenhouse gas impacts on climate change and air pollution. So we asked staff, well, what would be the environmental impacts of trucking waste to Gilroy? Because we have a climate protection plan in Palo Alto. We're trying to reduce our greenhouse gases. And the number that came back, over 1,000 tons per year. So we pulled together a blue ribbon task force made up of nine experts in the community to look at our organic waste stream. And it wasn't just yard waste, but also food waste and even sewage sludge. And after deliberating for more than half a year, they came back with the recommendation of anaerobic digestion which could process all three waste streams. And the way anaerobic digestion works is you have microorganisms in enclosed containers that break down organic waste and release biogas, which is methane, which is a renewable energy source. And the city had a challenge at that point. We had a chicken or egg situation. Uh, it sounded like we had a, a viable technology. Uh, but without certainty, uh, it didn't really make sense to undedicate 10 acres of the dump, which was scheduled to become part of Bixby Park. And without knowing that we had the land available, it was a little bit premature to start working on a, a project. So two things happened. First of all, a group called the Palo Alto Green Energy and Compost Initiative collected signatures to put the land issue on the ballot. And we had to collect 4,400 signatures. We collected over 6,000, and 5,100 were valid. So people power put Measure E on the ballot. Uh, what it does is it will repurpose 10 acres of the 126-acre dump, uh, so that's 8% right next to the wastewater treatment plant for a state-of-the-art waste conversion facility that would create green energy, reduce greenhouse gases, and save the city money. And <clears throat> that's what we'll be voting on in November, is whether to make that land available. Uh, the alternatives to creating a facility here in Palo Alto would be to uh, truck our yard waste and food waste down to Gilroy. Uh, that would produce tremendous greenhouse gas emissions. It would add 450,000 truck miles. And these are big, big trucks that get very poor gas mileage. It would cost between 30 and $44 million. And we'd also continue to incinerate our sewage sludge, which is Palo Alto's dirty little secret. We're one of two communities left in California that still burns our sewage sludge. It costs more than a million dollars in energy uh, per year. It creates a waste ash that's high in copper. Uh, so that has to be trucked down to Kettleman City at a cost of $200,000 a year. And then there's half a million operations and maintenance. Uh, the second thing that happened is that the city commissioned a feasibility study to explore the different options. And it found that, yes, anaerobic digestion would reduce our greenhouse gas emissions by thousands of tons per year. Uh, it would produce enough uh, renewable energy to power the equivalent of 1,400 homes in Palo Alto. And with the likely scenario that they felt, uh, the financial scenario that they felt was most realistic, it would save about $18 million over 20 years. So the economics work, uh, the environmental aspects of it work. And right now, what we need to do is make the land available. The, the technology is not determined. Uh, there are a few different viable technologies available that uh, will meet our, our community's needs and really put us at the forefront of environmental issues. In 1965, when the dump was dedicated to eventually become parkland, uh, it was a very different world. Lyndon Johnson was president. The Vietnam War was just starting to heat up. Uh, the population of the planet was half of what it is today. And we didn't know about climate change. The biggest threat to humanity is climate change. And there's something we can do about it here in Palo Alto. So I encourage folks to vote yes on Measure E. It only pr pr provides options. Uh, it doesn't determine the technology. Once we've, uh, we've looked at all the different options and the, the finances of it, we'll do a thorough environmental review. Uh, we're all environmentalists who are working on the Yes on E campaign. We care a lot about open spaces. We feel this is a really great trade-off for the community. It's tough economic times. This will save us money. Uh, the environment is such a pressing issue. Palo Altans are very green. We've been doing uh, recycling and composting for a long time. 
let's not let that go away. That would be a step backwards. So please vote yes on Measure E. Hello, I'm Emily Renzel. Thank you for the opportunity to tell you why you should vote no on Measure E. Measure E is really about park undedication, removal of park protections from 10 acres of Bixby Park in the Palo Alto Baylands. We believe it's unwise to undedicate parkland when the potential use is unknown. Once parkland is gone, it is gone forever. To try to make dry anaerobic digestion on parkland look feasible financially, the city's consultant, ARI, played with many variables, yet the 20-year costs range from $111 to $268 million. And in June, we learned that dry anaerobic digestion has never been used anywhere in the world for sewage sludge. That was unknown to the compost task force. It should be eliminated from consideration as it has not been proven technically feasible, and we don't consider it a viable alternative. Proponents' favored options depend on five conditions to make them even vaguely comparable financially to Palo Alto's current regional plan. They require free land, below market financing, public ownership operation and risk, ability to dig out old garbage and spread it on the park, and a multi-million dollar pilot project to test the technology for sewage sludge. If you were deciding on a 20-year investment of $111 to $268 million, would you want to bet on all five of those variables converging to provide the lower of those numbers? That's what proponents do. Dry anaerobic digestion technology has been used in Europe primarily to reduce the volume of garbage, not to make compost for people's food production. They use the digestate end product for landfill cover or incinerate it for energy. In Palo Alto, the end product must be marketed to landscapers. Farmers will not use compost from food waste or sewage sludge. It is typically used as alternative daily landfill cover. As for global warming, the maximum net carbon savings of this project is only three-tenths of a percent of Palo Alto's carbon emissions. Palo Alto's current regional plan for food scraps and yard trimmings is the most economical plan. It does not depend on magical numbers or assumptions. Palo Alto's ratepayers will not be subject to a multi-million dollar gamble. This plan was recommended by the Palo Alto Zero Waste Task Force and adopted by the City Council. Combined with a new wet anaerobic digester at the sewage plant, it is the best plan. As for truck trips to Gilroy, once yard trimmings are left six miles away at the Smart Station in Sunnyvale, only two to three trucks a day go from there to Gilroy, not thousands as proponents suggest. Similarly, the sewage incinerator is a false issue. The sewage plant incinerator will be replaced with wet anaerobic digestion in the next 10 years. Over 80% of the greenhouse gas savings will occur with that change. No parkland is required. You are being asked to undedicate parkland without any environmental review. If Measure E passes, there will be huge environmental impacts on Bixby Park. Using the 10-acre site will require digging up over 3.5 million cubic feet of old garbage from parts of the landfill and dumping it on the remaining 43 acres of park. This will require reopening the now-closed landfill, recontouring the remaining 43 acres to meet state requirements, and rebuilding toxics collection systems. Costs not included in the ARI study, by the way. The 43 acres of park would remain closed for 10 years whether or not a digester is built. If the garbage has to be hauled to another landfill, the AD factory is totally infeasible. This is a very complex issue. We should not undedicate parkland without understanding all the facts. Trail systems will be impacted as well. Bixby Park's perimeter trail connects to loop trails within the park. Using the 10-acre part of the park for a digester cuts off that trail forever. The Around the Bay Trail, initiated by former Senator Byron Schur, who, by the way, endorses no on E, connects Bixby Park with other nearby parks. Removal of this 10 acres and fencing it off cuts off these important trail connections. Habitat and screen planting will also be lost. The proposed 10-acre site will wipe out all of the landscaping between the sewage plant and Bixby Park. This is the only habitat corridor between the bay and the Renzel wetlands and is currently used by gray foxes, a variety of local raptors, and smaller birds and mammals. 
There will be noise, odors, dust, and traffic if this facility is built. Massive doors will remain open for the constant truck traffic. Such facilities require a 1,000-foot buffer zone, which would effectively make all of Bixby Park a buffer zone. Measure E involves many complexities. Vote no on Measure E. It's um, expensive, risky, and, and um, unreliable. Thank you. Well, I really wish this debate could be about facts and not scare tactics and misinformation. Uh, someone asked me the other day if Karl Rove had moved to Palo Alto and started Swift Boat Veterans against composting. Uh, that's the level that we're getting from our opponents. Uh, for example, uh, their information has pictures of pristine wetlands, suggesting that's where the site would be built. Not true. This is heavily impacted land. It's a former dump right next to the sewage treatment plant. It can uh, never be converted back to wetlands. Uh, there will be no play structures there. Can't plant trees because that would break the seal of the landfill. I uh, can't fly kites because there's an airport close by. Uh, they talk about no factory in a park. Well, this is a technology, anaerobic digestion, that uses microorganisms and enclosed vessels to break down waste into biogas. This is a process that's been around for billions of years. No smokestacks or anything that people associate with factories. On the economics, the feasibility study was very clear. that There were two different uh, possibilities for anaerobic digestion. There was a cluster of low bids and then a couple of high bids that had all sorts of build, bells and whistles. And staff said, it's not a range, it's either or. And the low cost option is more than suitable for Palo Alto. So our opponents continue to use these high cost options to try to scare people. The uh, consultant looked at three financial scenarios. Uh, first one was what we favored. The third one was what they favored. And the middle one was what staff felt was most realistic. And what they found was that anaerobic digestion would likely save $18 million over 20 years. But after that, the savings increased dramatically. In year one, anaerobic digestion would cost $87 per ton, whereas their favorite option would be $100 per ton. But in year 20, our option would be 53 per ton, and theirs would be 123 per ton. So you can see that the, the trend would be much more in favor of anaerobic digestion. Um, Something that they uh, will argue is that we need to pay market rate rent. So uh, the, the idea is that the land could be used for anything, so what would the market rate be? And in fact, for a long time they were saying that once it's undedicated, it could be used for any purpose, office buildings, etc. Uh, the uh, city attorney nipped that in the bud and said, no, the, the initiative clearly states this is for the exclusive purpose of waste conversion. But uh, the, the, uh, an appraiser, an independent appraiser working for the city, found that the rent would probably be about $100,000 per year. They're arguing for nine times that, $900,000 per year. Now, the rent is totally up to the city council. If we want to ch charge the ratepayers rent to go into the general fund, it stays in Palo Alto. It's just a question of whether it's in your pocket or the general fund. Uh, they're arguing for the higher rent. So they're arguing for higher refuse rates, and yet they're saying that this is going to uh, hurt you. It doesn't have to, and it's up to the city council. Our, our, we have um, a couple of options that we're looking at. Um, they talk about our favorite one, dry anaerobic digestion. That might be possible, but another very feasible technology is wet anaerobic digestion for sewage sludge, as Emily said, but you can combine food waste with that so you can double the impact. This is done thousands of places around the world, including in Oakland, East Bay Municipal Utilities District, and they power most of their facility. And when you combine food waste with sewage sludge, it actually boosts the energy production greater than the sum of the parts. And so here what we can do is process our food waste in Palo Alto. We own the energy, one and a half million dollars per year. We don't have to pay someone else to uh, process it for, it for us after trucking it to that location. Uh, so it really makes sense. Then with a the digestate from this process, we could compost it aerobically with yard waste, and we handle all three waste streams. Now, when you think about our, our food and yard waste being trucked away to Gilroy, maybe food waste to San Jose eventually, um, here it's 40,000 tons per year of waste. That's enough waste to fill a football field the size of City Hall, 120 feet, uh, all getting trucked away 53 miles to Gilroy, maybe a little closer to San Jose producing tremendous greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, by retiring the incinerator, we're not only reducing greenhouse gases and saving money, but also air pollutants like mercury and chromium that can affect our health. Uh, again, 
Measure E just makes the land available. It gives us options. If we vote no on Measure E, it's a done deal. We truck our stuff away. We're at the mercy of one vendor that handles all of the organic waste processing in Santa Clara County versus being independent. We've been independent with our utilities. We have some of the greenest energy and some of the cheapest energy. It was a great investment over 100 years ago. Now is the time to make another investment, one that will save us money and help protect the environment. Vote yes on Measure E. Visit our website at pagreenenergy.org. Thank you. I again urge you to vote no on Measure E. Um, Mr. Dreckmeyer has talked about uh, the signature collection, and I recognize that a large number of Palo Alto residents signed the petition to put this on the ballot. The literature that was distributed with that said nothing at all about park on dedication. There was one small little caption on a photo that talked about repurposing the dump. Nobody was told they were asking to undedicate parkland. Um, the city's trash hauler comes from Santa Clara every day with their trash trucks. Those roll up the highway, come here, collect the trash, and take it down to the smart station in Sunnyvale. That's what they would do with our curbside compost as well. And those trips are being made whether the trucks are empty or full. So that's kind of a false issue there. Uh, the maximum savings per year, the net savings on carbon between the various alternatives being compared is uh, 2,240 tons, not thousands of tons per year. I mean, well, 2,000 is thousands, but um, this park was dedicated at the time when we thought the landfill would close. And uh, this was the 60s when people did a lot of horrible things like filling wetlands. And it's true. It's disturbed. And, and all of the landfills that were around the bay were disturbed. Still, there are many, many wonderful parks that people enjoy now that were former landfills, and ours could be the same. We're just unfortunately at the juncture where we haven't developed it yet. But Candlestick Point Recreation Area, um, Bedwell Bayfront Park, Ravenswood Park, Cooley Landing, Shoreline Park, Baylands Park in Sunnyvale, Berkeley Meadow and East Shore State Park are all parks that were made from landfills and they're much beloved now and much used. It takes vision and obviously our opponents don't have that vision. All they can think about is a dump. The, um, we have not been using scare tactics. We have been speaking our truth about what is uh, the information that's available. Uh, this will be a factory. It's going to have moving equipment. It's going to have a grinder. It's going to have um, a generator that's going to have to burn the gas to make the electricity that has been so touted. And uh, so it will be, as, for all intents and purposes, a factory. And um, as for the uh, use of the, st the statistics, I think Mark Twain said there are lies, damn lies, and statistics. And there are plenty of those statistics here, and uh, everybody's making fairly free use of them. Um, the uh, East Bay mud that keeps being cited by uh, the proponents of this it was a special case that isn't comparable at all to what we have here. First of all, it's wet anaerobic digestion. Second of all, Oakland had a huge number of food factories that went out of town, and they were left with sewage capacity, that, uh, these digester capacity that they were not using. They import the material that they digest there from 50 miles away in Napa, probably with a few greenhouse gases. And then when they get done, the digest state is hauled 90 miles to be used as alternative daily cover at the Altamont landfill. So it's not comparable at all, and they already had a sunk capital cost. This is asking the taxpayers of Palo Alto and the ratepayers of Palo Alto who know that all of our garbage rates and our electric and water rates have all gone up and up and up to take a gamble, a multi, many millions of dollar gamble on a new technology that has never before used, been used anywhere in the world for sewage sludge and to try to um, impose this on parkland 
causing tremendous difficulty to the parks. We will uh, never have the same open space pastoral park that has been contemplated for many years and uh, would become a reality without Measure E. Please vote no on Measure E. It's risky, it's expensive, and it's misleading.